Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Mystery Box Function Challenge. In the purple box, there is some mystery math, and your job is to figure out what that is. You can use the link in the description to try this out, and when you've got an idea, come on back, see if we get the same thing. All right, let's begin. I'll put in a zero. And zero gives us zero. How about a one? And a one gives us an interesting decimal. Hmm. So is this some kind of uh, square root function or a trig function? Oh, maybe maybe a downward opening parabola. Another decimal there. Let's try a three. Now it's going down. I th if if this is a parabola, it's a it's an odd one. Um, Maybe it's trig, so let's just keep going beyond three. Still going down. I'm going to keep going. Oops, did four twice. Let me try five. Uh-huh. So I'm thinking trig now. Let's try six. Yeah. And let's try an approximation for 2 pi. 6.2 is pretty close. Yeah, and we're getting very close to zero again. Okay, so let's think about our trig functions. So the trig functions um, that we're used to seeing are sine, cosine. We've seen tangent once or twice. Uh, and remember, these are the sine and the cosine are measuring this angle. Uh, so if there's an angle formed here, it measures the endpoints. And those x and y coordinates, the, the cosine is the x and the sine is the y. So at an angle of 0, y is 0. And we've got 0, 0 here. So I'm thinking this is sine. And if you go all the way around to 2 pi, you're back to 0 again. When you're near pi, and here's that, we're near 0 again. So I'm thinking this is sine. But it's not just sine of x because these values would be wrong. The, the biggest you can get for x or y in, in this unit circle with just the, the cosine function and the sine function is 1. And the smallest you can get is negative 1. It looks like, so here we're pretty close to the bottom of our curve there, it looks like. And that's very close to a negative 2. I've got negative 1.9 something. and here. We're really close to this is at this is at two. Well, let's let's actually put in um, an approximation for pi over two. So so we'll try pi over two, and that's 1.5 ish. Yeah, and look at that. We're almost exactly on two. So I think what has happened is we've got the sine function, but the the troughs and the crests are higher. They're twice as high. How you get that with a sine function or, or any of these um, is that you multiply by that number. So this should just be two times the sine of x. And you know this multiplier, what it does is it changes the amplitude, and that's the distance, you know, from zero to the highest value or from zero to the lowest value. That's that's called the amplitude of a wave function. So I think we've got two times the sine of x. Let's go ahead and reveal that. Yes, 2 times the sine of x. And we can graph it, too. So it'll be a cool-looking graph. Yeah, so there's that typical repeating sine curve, but it's just taller um, than we're used to seeing by, by a factor of 2. Well, how did they go for you? Did you see this was trigonometric, and did you did you get the multiplier? Let me know. Thanks, everybody.